Can I take Team USA past the round of 16? That's the mission for this campaign. It's not going to be easy. This team is ranked 19. Depending on which screen we look at, we're rated three and a half or four stars out of five. Our best players are in the autumns of their respective careers. Tim Howard, Clint Dempsey are the highest rated players among our final 23. We also have Michael Bradley and Landon Donovan, an alumnus of that historic 2002 World Cup team that had gone to the quarterfinals and lost to Germany. To make things more difficult, we are in a legitimate group of death. We're pitted against Ghana, Portugal, and Germany. Our campaign begins on June 16th in Natal against Ghana, the same nation that had eliminated us four years earlier in South Africa. They beat us in the round of 16, two to one, and they would go on to push Uruguay to the brink in the quarterfinals before losing on penalty kicks. The Black Stars are led by Michael Essien, Asamoa Gian, who had missed that penalty at the end of regulation following Luis Suarez's handball. There's also Kevin Brintz Boateng, the brother of Jerome Boateng, who is playing in this group for Germany. Early in the match, Gian and Boateng hook up. A right side cross from Boateng finds Gian on the edge of the six yard box. He's completely uncontested and he scores the opening goal. Landon Donovan, as he's done so many times, tries to score a clutch goal for Team USA. His free kick hits the crossbar, but a minute later he sneaks past the defensive line and blasts a shot past Kingston. Josie Altidore, our main man up front, he does his best to take the lead for Team USA, but he's turned away multiple times. And so we go into halftime tied at one. In the 56th minute, we are the beneficiaries of divine intervention or maybe just a lapse in concentration when an own goal results from a pass back between a Ghana defender and Kingston. About 20 minutes later, Tim Howard has a goalkeeping gaffe of his own. A giveaway leads to near disaster, but we recover. In the 80th minute, Dempsey feeds the ball to Altidore, and he finally scores. And that is the final goal of the game. We win 3-1, to one, and more importantly, we earn three very critical points in this tough group of ours. Man of the match is Jermaine Jones, who had done a lot of the defensive dirty work in midfield. Match day two in Group G is on June 22nd, and for us, we face Portugal. There's no changes to our winning side from match day one, so we're coming out in a 4-2-3-1 formation. Portugal is coming out in a 4-3-3 formation, led by Ronaldo, of course. He's backed up by Nani and a pair of veteran central defenders in Pepe and Bruno Alves. Early in the match, the first third of the game, Bradley splits that veteran defensive pairing, and he first times a shot pass for Wee Patricio to give Team USA an early lead. Less than 10 minutes later, Dempsey does a back heel, hits Bruno Alves' foot, and then hits his arm. That leads to a penalty shot for Altador. He converts and gives us a two-goal lead. But less than five minutes later, the tables turn. Bradley dives to block a shot inside her 18-yard box. In the eyes of the referee, the ball had come up and hit his arm or hand. And you know who steps up to the penalty spot. And you know what happens. Near halftime, Clint Dempsey tries to restore our two goal lead, but he's not able to convert. Just before halftime, our defense gets lax. Nani receives a lob through ball, runs in on goal untouched, and ties the game. And that's how the score stands at halftime. Dempsey has another shot on goal. He's not able to restore our lead. In the 82nd minute, Portugal's got a right corner. Pepe beats Howard, but his teammate Danny covers the rebound and he gives Portugal the lead. In the final minutes, we try to salvage at least a point. Donovan and later Altador with great chances, but they're not able to convert. And so we choke away a 2-0 lead and really make things difficult for us. Our goal of getting past the round of 16 might not happen because we might not even get past the group stage. The man of the match is Michael Bradley, despite that unfair handball call. So after two games, we sit 
in second place of group G, but there's so many possibilities. The best thing that we can do is take control of our fate when we face Germany. They come out in a 4-2-3 formation just like ours. But unlike our team, they've got stars and a good combination of experience and youth, including a handful of players who had announced themselves on the world stage four years earlier in South Africa. The first half is definitely tilted in favor of Germany. Tim Howard is up to the task though in our defense. Our whole team rallies around him to make key blocks and clearances. We go into halftime barely hanging on. We learn that Portugal is leading Ghana 1-0 at that time. Our defensive tenacity continues in the second half. Bradley and Donovan helping out of the defensive end. In the 53rd minute, a weird series of deflections involve Muller and Ozil, two of those stars, those young stars for Germany. In the 62nd minute, the improbable becomes a bit more probable when Josie Altidore gets a great shot on goal off both posts. And that gives us a 1-0 lead. In the dying minutes, we are just hanging on. Gunnowin turns and shoots, but he hits the post. That's the second time the post has saved us, and we win the match. 1-0. It's a reversal of that historic 2002 matchup between the U.S. and Germany. Man of the match is definitely Tim Howard anchoring our defense and just the whole team in general. We learn that Portugal has beaten Ghana 2-0. And so in a weird turn of events, we actually top the group. We're tied with Germany for points and goal differential, but we have that third tiebreaker. We have more goals scored. The group stage yields some interesting results. Argentina, England, and Switzerland, each with nine full points. Brazil, Spain, Colombia, and Russia, all with seven points. We go into the round of 16, facing South Korea, the runner-up of Group G, and coincidentally, the host of that historic 2002 World Cup run. South Korea comes out in a 4-2-3-1 formation like so many other nations. They don't have any household names aside from Hung Min Sun. One change for us, we've replaced Eddie Johnson on the right wing with Zuzi. Johnson out with a pulled hamstring. The toll of this tournament is also taking effect on a South Korean player or physicality leads to an injury that forces him to be subbed out. In the first third of the game, we have plenty of chances. Dempsey with a shot on target. Zuzi with a miss. In the 35th minute, South Korea proves that it's quality of scoring chances that matter, not quantity. They take the lead with a well-placed shot to the right of Tim Howard. As halftime approaches, Donovan tries to score yet another clutch goal but nothing happens for us and so we go into halftime down one nil in the 67th minute south korea is parking the bus dempsey finds out the tour and he ties the game despite all of the chances that we create we just cannot take the lead and so we go into extra time in the first half of extra time we create more chances but we still can't hit the target in the second half of extra time we have near disaster, giveaway near our own touchline leads to a free header for a South Korean player, but he cannot win the game. In the dying moments of extra time, Clint Dempsey pulls up lame, and that's important. He's one of our five chosen shot takers. He's number two. Donovan converts his first chance. The first South Korean misses. For some reason, Donovan is allowed to take Dempsey's spot, so he goes again and he scores again. We fail to convert one of our chances. Things go in our favor again when another South Korea player fails to convert. Finally, Jones steps up with a chance to end the game and he does so. So there we go. On to quarterfinals. So far matching the best output ever for a US men's national team. Man of the match, Josie Altidore. That critical tying goal. We have won the battle, but we might just have lost the war because Clint Dempsey, our captain and best outfield player, is unavailable for our quarterfinal matchup. We return to Rio to face off against Switzerland. They're not a perennial powerhouse, but they have gotten nine full points in the group stage of this tournament. A couple of notable players, Shakiri and Jaka, as well as some key players from that 2010 team that had been the only team to beat Spain in South Africa. Demarcus Beasley, another alumnus of that historic 2002 team, taking Donovan's spot in the left wing and Donovan is moving into the number 10 spot. In the first third, there's uncontested chances. 
in the 30th minute, Switzerland converts. They are definitely dominating us in terms of possession and chances. So we go into halftime, like in the previous game, down 1-0. In the second half, the veteran leaders for both teams, Donovan for Team USA, in there for Switzerland, each with a shot on goal. Then in the 73rd minute, Donovan, like he's done so many times before, with a very important goal, he pounces on a rebound and ties the game. In the final third of regulation, Howard bails us out, Switzerland with shots on goal. Despite Switzerland's dominance, we go into extra time once again. In the first half of extra time, we give up a breakaway to Shakiri. He's not able to convert. In the 95th minute, Granit Xhaka has come on as a sub. He connects with Shakiri. A right side cross leads to another six yard header. Just like in that first game against Ghana, and then we are down two to one. We lose concentration and almost give up another goal. Ten minutes later, Jaka, super sub, passes to Stalker inside her 18-yard box. Another defensive lapse. In the second half of extra time, Zuzi gets our best chance of the extra period, but he's ruled to be offside. And that's really the final score. We're outmatched from start to finish. Two to ten shots on target. Two for us, ten for Switzerland. Man of the match is Tim Howard, despite giving up three goals. This matchup could have been even more one-sided. Switzerland goes on to lose in the semi-final against Brazil 3-0. Brazil goes on to defeat the previous champion Spain in penalties. Switzerland pushes Germany to the brink in the third place game but they lose on penalties. Here's the individual accolades. You know we left it all on the field. Okay. So we have accomplished our objective of getting past the round of 16. We have matched the historic output of that 2002 U.S. men's national team in South Korea. We've won a very tough group, so it's not a complete loss. Losing Dempsey definitely hurt. Had he played, we might have advanced, but just all the defensive lapses the ball inside our 18 yard box leaving shooters attackers uncontested but we did show resilience three times we were able to tie the game after giving up the first goal and so overall a relatively successful campaign for team usa in brazil